So this magnificent flower bed all along here has not had a touch of water in, I think we're nearly at six weeks. And this has in it, there is feverfew, there's toad flax, which is a beautiful little purple flower. This is willow herb, which look at the detail in that flower is gorgeous. So then there's foxgloves, uh, oxide daisies. So this is valerian here. And let's see, Canterbury bells. And you can see the bees are still busy on it. It's very bee friendly. There's, and they love, the bees love the toad flax. There's bees all over the toad flax. They keep flying away. Every time I fill them, film them, they fly away. But they're loving the toad flax. Under there is next year's foxgloves because they're a biannual blooming flower. So yeah, now I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. It's taken years of throwing out seeds and stuff like that. And it should just get better and better and better. Here you can see this foxglove is getting ready its seed heads. Now we just will leave it there to ripen. And look at all the valerian, the white and the pink valerian. Very busy here with bees. My purple sage is looking a little ragged around the edges. There's a rose in there, do you see over there? Now I did water these guys because they were looking very sad and now they've perked up a little bit, but they haven't had water in a while. There's a Catoniaster in the background there. There's Catoniaster, sage, valerian, a rose that's looking a bit ragged. I do have to get rid of this though, that's an ash tree. I don't want an ash tree to grow up in front of my workshop door. <clears throat> So, and you can see earlier this year, there was honesty, which I'm gonna wait till that so, it, the seeds, seeds ripen, and then I'll re-spread them all the way along this whole stretch here. So this is the wool workshop door. You come in here, and here's the wool and the spinning wheels, and this is a painting of a sheep made out of wool. I don't know if I, you can see that that is made, all made out of wool. Then we have the wool goddess, of course. And then that's Bodacious, that's Alfie, painted by this lovely artist called Dano, who I highly recommend. And these are some ink pots. These are, this is an ink pot for writing ink. Then it would be decanted into this, and then this would have been brought in and put into the inkwell. So, this is basket is made by a friend of mine with a deer antler. This is Inca's favorite spot. She always gets in the basket whenever I come in here to do spinning or a demonstration. And then here are my wool blankets. This is my travel rug, the cat's blanket and the bed blanket. The bed blanket at the moment is sold out online. I don't have any left. I have to wait till I go to the mill. I have a few of these and more of these left. Then that's a wonderful um, uh, wool painting, as it were, or picture, whatever you want to call it, made by somebody in Florida. And those are all Irish yarns you can get all over Ireland. She made that for me. I love it, love it, love it. That's another wool creation, a kind of weaving macrame type thing. Then, oh, there's my book, Bodacious, that one of the posters for it. Then over here, we have, I love this chair, it's an amazing chair, no nails. It's all put together really interestingly. Here we have, this is some Zwartblas yarn, and this is an amazing heavy sweater that I wear in the winter that's delicious. And then I have my wonderful demonstration of multi-species sward. So yeah, this is the wool workshop room that tour groups come in to see. And um, my horseshoes. As, what are you doing, scratching? 
this time of year it's it's um grass seeds that all the dogs get involved in look at my sage i can make some delicious food out of my sage then yeah so this is i think is very successful as a dry garden that there has been no um rain no watering no nothing so very very busy and oh this is soil I was trying to figure out i said what is that and it's soil i dumped out of the pot over there not water and not eggs of something look at the fever few i'm hoping more fever few comes in here because it flowers all summer long fever few is an amazing successful um herb and dry conditions and the oxide daisies they i think i had them here first last year or the year before anyway there we go that's that isn't that right it's all good so that is beginning to look like a really lovely dry garden surviving the drought we've had no hardly any rain a spit of rain in six weeks so there we go isn't that right poppers yeah Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, smiley face. All oh, happy dogs. Come on, let's go. Come on, puppers. Yeah. You're so clever. Oh, oh, I have to show you. Where is it? Oh no, it's all gone. There's a wonderful poppy here. This is the seed heads for it. And it has multi, multi-headed flowers. Never mind. More valerian and all those other there's more fever few and an ash tree i have to get rid of so looking well